Here's an interesting thing. Well, if light has a, a, a particle nature to it, so we talk about photons of, of light, x-rays we know do that too, then this gentleman by the name, he's a French physicist uh, by the name of de Broglie, that's how you supposedly pronounce that, de Broglie, uh, he postulated that perhaps the opposite is true. So if waves have a particle nature, then do particles, things that, that we think of traditionally as particles, do they have a wave nature? That's what he set out to prove, or to, 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 to investigate, and it turns out they do. And so we talk about the wave uh, properties of particles. And in order to uh, investigate that, well, you know that the energy of a, of, of a photon of light is equal to H times F, which is equal to HC all over um, lambda, right? Well, we also know that E equals mc squared, all right, Einstein's equation. And one more thing, you know that at least for a photon, the momentum would equal mass times velocity, which would be m times c. I'm going to do some substitutions here. P is equal to m times c. So I mean, that's going to be n times c, so p times c. So the energy is equal to p times c. Again, this is mc, but you still have another c, right? Because it's c squared. This is an equation you want to remember. All right. This is the energy of a photon. You could solve now for the momentum of a photon, now that we know that photons have such things. Now, I can put this equal to that. Okay, energy, 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 PC, and that. So P times C, that equals HC all over lambda. The C's cancel out. And so we end up with momentum equals Planck's constant over wavelength. Momentum, which is mass times velocity, equals Planck's constant all over wavelength. Or wavelength equals momentum all over, I'm sorry, Planck's constant all over the momentum. That equation is given on the equation sheet for um, AP physics. The wavelength of a particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum of that particle. Whether that particle is a photon, mass times velocity, which would be um, n times c, or a baseball, all right? The mass of the baseball, not times c, but times whatever speed it is. Or your car, you know, you're driving in your car with whatever mass the total system has times the velocity with which it's traveling. It has wave properties. Now those wave properties for the car are gonna be extremely small, but still, technically speaking, it does, okay? Now, this is what you're going to be using to solve some of these problems. Um, one thing I do want to uh, warn you is that as you get close to the speed of light, so we're going to use this, which equals h times mv, right? Because p is mv for whatever particle. As you get close to the speed of light, if you're talking about an electron or a proton towards the speed of light, um, you're in the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So as you start getting close to that, probably anything above about any speed that's probably about 10% of the speed of light, 0.1c, when you start getting anywhere around there or above, you have to start thinking about Relativity. Now, we, relativity is no longer part of our curriculum. So how do you handle relativistic effects? Say that one three times as fast as you can. Relativistic effects. Um, relativistic effects. As you get closer to the speed of light, this stuff all changes. Well, the way you handle that, uh, 
The momentum of something is equal to m times v. That's true. We studied that uh, months ago. But I didn't tell you the whole story. Um, it's actually m times v divided by the square root of 1 minus that speed, that velocity squared, all over c squared. That takes into account relativity. Now, keep in mind that <coughs> this is a really big number. And for just about anything you can think of, it's traveling way smaller than that. And then you square it all, which makes it even smaller. And so basically, you're just dividing by 1 all the time, because this is 1 minus an infinitesimally small number, which just means p equals mv. But as you start getting higher and higher, you need to take that into account. Uh, by the way, you don't have to go put in 3 times 10 to the 8 every time you calculate this out. You can just put in, if you have something like the velocities 0.1c, you can find the uh, rel you can find the denominator of this by doing m times v divided by the square root of 1 minus, and just put that in parentheses, 0.1 times c all squared. All right, well, actually, I don't, I can just, 0.1 squared, excuse me. No, that looks nasty, nasty. So 0.1 squared, I didn't need the parentheses, times c squared. All right, is that whole thing squared. Divided by c squared, that's c squared. So here's your velocity, 0.1c, all squared, divided by c squared. So that cancels out, all right? And then it's still going to come out to be pretty darn small, right? The effect of that. It's going to be point, when you do 1 minus, that can be 0.9, something or other. Okay, so it's going to have a very small effect. But that, that's how you handle that. Uh, I'd like to do a, a quick example. If you had, uh, if you had, say, um, oh, you know what? Let me pause this and I'll write it up. All right.